And if you want to ask me what is the function of this house, is to bring people together, like we are gathering today. People from all walks of life. I mean, what is happening in the Middle East should raise the attention of all the people of the world. It can happen anywhere. Right now, Jews and Arabs are sharing the, the graves. When we are going to share above the land, on the land. And there is enough place for all. I use the Yiddish word, genuch. It is enough. 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 It is enough. 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 It is enough. In, in Yiddish we say genuch. <laughs> Sometimes we have been struggling, in my opinion, in vain. Peace is only said it is the lack of war. Yeah. Peace is deeper. Yes. Peace is life. This is uh, taste, everything. Everything. I want to shake the universe. I want to shake humanity. Wake up. All is expensive. Peace is priceless. Even the simplest people know that it is better to live together rather than die together. I say I would love to live with problems rather than die without problems. Listen, love is the essence of life. I'd like to welcome you in this humble house, in this house of peace, in this house of love. Listen, my life story, I, I wish that I will sit down, settle down to write it down. I was a Palestinian boy. 13 years old, living in this town, living in this house. I was the eldest son of a Palestinian leader. And I met, I experienced all the Palestinian side Good. until the age of 13, until the Israelis took over the town. I was all the time on the Palestinian side. I never, ever knew what is a Jew. Uh, never. I, I, I remember one day I saw some writing in Hebrew and I asked my father, what is this language? He told me this is Hebrew. In this room where we are sitting, most of the Palestinian leaders before 1948 met here with my father. When the Israelis took over the town, the Israeli lieutenant who knocked at the door of my father early in the morning came with a unit of Haganah people. Oh, yeah. I remember asking the soldiers, I don't know which language, where are the British? Uh, they told me, what do you need the British for? <laughs> I said, I want to continue my studies. <laughs> they said, forget about it. <laughs> I moved from London University to the Hebrew University, one of the early Arab students. And I met the Jewish ocean. I dropped in the Jewish ocean. I swam in the Jewish ocean. And out of poverty, I rented a room in Me'ar Sharim. This is where I learned Yiddish. And I learned about the different Jewish, there are more differences among the Jews than there is between the Arabs. <laughs> I know, <laughs> we spoke about this. <laughs> so, it opened my eyes. It opened my eyes to, to, to find out that we don't know each other. We don't know about each other. Yeah. This is, there is a proverb in Arabic, you are the enemy of something that you don't know. Yeah. As long as we don't know, yeah. We are against it. We don't want it. We want it. When you know it's different, yes. it is totally different. Yeah. From that time, 1948, until today, my brother, you can imagine the huge amount of ex life experience that I have had. Yeah. The different kinds, the different cultures, the different people. I learned everything, and I changed my course. I chose the path of peace because I found out that this is the only rational way. I dedicated my life 
to make as much as I can, uh, to work as much as I can for peace. One of the ways that I am involved in making peace is sulha. It's the old Arab traditional peacemaking process. And I want to tell you, this is a unique process that has been in existence for 2,000 years at least and still going. It ends, it puts an end to the, to the conflict. And I heard from my father, who was before me in this process, that during 100 years, during his lifetime, there was never a violation of Sulha. It is not easy to make peace, I want to tell you. Before restoring dignity, you cannot work peace. A, a humbled man, a humiliated man cannot make peace. I once asked my father, how could this old man shake hands with the killer of his son? During Sulha, you have to shake hands to say that it's over. How could this old man overcome his emotions and shake hands with the killer of his son? And my father's answer was, this old man is wise. He lost one son. He doesn't want to lose the other son. I attended many Sulhas with my father. But I never concluded any sulha until he passed away. So after, in 1981, I started the first sulha. And from that time on, I took part in so many sulhas. In the Arab sulha, we believe that the end of every problem is peace. As-sulh Sayyid al-Ahkam. Reconciliation is the master of all judgments. If you imagine that the first story in the Bible, the creation, it still began, the beginning of creation, was a murder case. Cain killed his brother, Abel. Brother, not enemy. There were two brothers only on this earth. Each one has half a planet. What did they quarrel for? We st I ask many, many scholars, many rabbis, many clergy, why did they quarrel? What is the reason of their war? What did they do? He said they quarreled over the love of God, over the grace of God. Each wanted the grace of God for himself. So I say they found a reason. I, I think we can coexist, but not without problems. I'm aware that coexistence has problems. It is not just, you know, simple as simple yeah. as we think of. But I prefer to live with problems rather than to die without problems. Yeah. <laughs> problems is not a big problem. Mm -hmm. Problems are found in order to be solved. And our wisdom is how to solve these problems when they come. There is enough place for all yeah. in this small land, tiny yeah. piece of land. Mm. There is enough place for all, for Arabs and Jews to live together. But they don't want to live together. This is the problem, is how to make them accept living together. The key, the secret of Arab-Jewish-Israeli problem is that when they decide to live together with difficulties, with problems, Jews and Arabs are angels, they are not <laughs> angels. If they don't have problems, they will create it. <laughs> and I think they are the good people in the world in creating problems. <laughs> we are the best at creating problems. <laughs> there is a proverb in Arabic when in, in the Sulha case, in the yeah. reconciliation. You see, we have to kill the problem, not the problem killing us. Uh, yes. We have to overcome the problem, not to let the problem overcome us. When we are able to do that, and only great people can do that, overcome the problem. If you kill the other human being, you don't kill the problem. The right, problem right. is inherited by his... In, in my book, the Sulha, I found a piece about Mark Twain, yeah. speaking about 100 years killing case and still inheriting. And when they asked him, what did you kill him for? I said, I don't know. <laughs> 
So when we come to the understanding that we can overcome problems, we know not to let overcome problems overcome us, then I think it is possible to go on the way of peace. Both peoples do not know enough about the other people. The Jews in Tel Aviv, I don't know how much they are aware of the life of Arab villages in Galilee. Meet each other on every level, psychologically, physically, and so on. I say we need to know each other and to know about each other. It is amazing how ignorant we are, how much we don't know about each other. Right. My point, why don't we dig deep in the ground to find more wisdom, old wisdom? The media is not carrying the real picture. Yeah. It is distorted picture. Mm. For example, the Palestinians as terrorists. Yeah. No. It's a distorting picture. They are not like that. Never, ever. And still now, even in the most difficult times, there are some Palestinians working in Tel Aviv. Yes. And some Jews go to Nablus to fix their cars. And <laughs> when you appreciate peace, when you lack it, who appreciate health? Sick people. We are sick. We are hungry for medicine. And what is the Abrahamic reunion is making, is, make, is giving us some medicine. It is not enough. We need more. The cup is empty. But if we add one drop, it gets fuller. The world is dark. If we light one candle, we are not going to eliminate the darkness, but it's going to be less dark. Yes. If more will come and add more candles, it will be brighter. If I am not hopeful, what is the alternative? Is it going to get better? If we are going to give up hope, do we think that it's going to get, to get anything better? Hope is the only thing left. So I am adhered to it. I am strongly catching it. Yes, I would like to send a message through you to the whole world and to my brothers and sisters anywhere and tell them as of my experience, out of my experience in this life, I found that peace is the only sane thing. Peace is the only beautiful thing that we can have. Peace is the reason of our life. Peace is the reason of our welfare, humanity welfare for all. I call people to try peace, to learn peace, to know about peace, to begin thinking, to begin changing the old ideas the old systems. Let us try to wage peace and not to wage war. It is not enough to make peace. We have to maintain peace. How, how could we maintain it? How could we keep it? How could we give it to our generations? My opinion about our gathering, that we are handling the torch of peace from one generation to another. The torch of peace must go, must pass from one to another, because we have to live in peace. Your responsibility on the young, on the young people is very important. You have to believe that this is wrong. What is done is wrong. It's not only to believe, we have to say it. We need the courage, the brave, to stand up and say it's wrong. You have to stop. So you have a great responsibility as a younger generation mm -hmm. to carry this message, this mission again and again. And hopefully days like these meetings will help you to believe more in the need of peace in our generation. We are going together work for peace and bring it and bring it, make it in here. Please come back anytime. We are hungry and thirsty for peace. All of us, continue the good work. God bless you.